Hi, welcome back to Physics uh, 145. Uh, today we're going to look at the solution for tutorial chapter 6, which is the rotational motion. Okay, so look at the tutorial 6, question 1. Define angular acceleration. Okay, number 1 is define angular acceleration. So our angular acceleration, normally the symbol used is alpha, okay, which is uh, analogous to linear acceleration. Normally we use a, okay. So angular acceleration is defined to be the rate of change, okay, of angular velocity, All right. So we have alpha, which is equal to d omega dt. This one is in a calculus form. If the delta, the change in time is uh, approaching zero, or else we normally have this uh, angular acceleration. The average value is the final angular velocity minus the initial divided by the change of time. Okay, divided by the change of time t. Right, so this is our definition for angular acceleration, and the unit, okay, the unit for angular acceleration is radian per second per second. Because this one here is radian per second, you divide by time again, you have a per second per second. Okay, so that's our first question. Now number two. Question number two is the twenty-six centimeter blade of the washing machine spin at the rate of 1 at 0, 0 revolution per minute. That one is omega. Okay, Angular velocity, 100 at, uh, 1800 revolution per minute. Normally, this one refers to RPM. It slows down uniformly. Okay, So, I will assume this is the initial value. And the final value is 600 RPM, revolution per minute, in a time of four seconds only so now compute the angular acceleration of the blade now we don't actually need to have that uh, 26 centimeter that one is just uh, try to confuse you so what we have here is we want our answer to be in radian per second per second so that means these two units have to be changed to something proper yeah so our omega initial is 1 at 0, 0, so we have revolution per minute. Now the way we change is the same as the first chapter, right? So 1 revolution is 2 pi radian, okay? So we already solved the first part. 1 revolution is 2 pi radian. 1 minute is 60 seconds, right? 60 seconds. So use our calculator to help us to solve 1 at 0, 0 times uh, 2 pi all right and then we divide by 60 seconds so we have 1 at, at 0.5 okay 1 at, at 0 0.50 radian per second by doing the same thing uh we see we have 600 times 2 pi again all right and then divide by 60 seconds we get 60 2.8 radian per second. Voila, we have the units all in the SI unit already. So now we can calculate the uh, angular acceleration. So we can use this formula now. Okay, this one. Yeah? So our average angular acceleration is equal to final minus initial omega and then divide by time. So we have this uh, 62.8 minus 1 at, at 0.5 and we divide by time of 4 seconds okay so we have 62.8 minus 1 at, at 0.5 and then divide by 4 seconds so i have negative 31.4 radian per second per second so it is uh, slowing down there it is slowing down eh? okay so there is our question number two Next one, number three. Question three. Well, question three says that a pulley is slowed down with a constant angular uh, ang angular acceleration, okay, from omega initial to uh, which is six five zero RPM again, see revolution per minute, 
to a final value of 350 RPM in a time of 30 seconds. So compute the initial angular velocity and final angular velocity in radian per second. Well, that one is just actually converting that value into SI unit. 650 RPM uh, changed to SI units. You just need to multiply by 2 pi radian divided by 60 seconds. So we have same like previous question here. 650 times 2 pi. Okay, and then divide by 60. So you have 68. Point one radian per second. Okay, first one. Omega final three five zero RPM. So we have three five zero times two pi radian divided by sixty seconds. So we're gonna get uh three five zero times uh two pi okay and then divide by sixty so we have thirty six 0.7 radian per second okay so those are the first part the second part angular acceleration of the pulley all right so we have alpha is equal to omega final minus initial omega divided by time which is 36.7 minus 68.1 and then divide by 30 seconds so we get 36.7 minus 68.1 divided by 30 seconds. So we have negative 1.05 radian per second per second. Okay. So that is our answer for uh, question 3. Now guys, you have to be careful with the answer you give here. Yeah? So sometimes I don't agree with the the number of significance in the answer that we have. You see, you look at this one. The information given to us is, let's say, is up to three significant figure. Three significant figures. This is only two significant figures. So the most accurate answer you can give is actually two significant figures. Okay, but uh, we just sometimes close our eyes. We assume that three, three. This one is thirty point zero, so it's also three. Your answer most accurate you can give is up to three significant figures. So this one should be sixty. 8.1 this one is 36.7 okay correct right 36.7 and this one should be like at most you can give up to negative 1.05 okay something like that so be consistent the studying of physics is about consistency yeah? it's not to show how powerful is your last value okay so if you give like that actually we can minus mark because you are not consistent with your uh, information given you know what is the meaning of this when your answer is up to this but your information like that that means your answer is more accurate it can give something more accurate than what you are measuring your equipment is not up to that accuracy but your answer give up to that accuracy that is a lot of error inside there you are not consistent okay you're not qualified to become a physicist number four okay define angular displacement well theta okay so angular displacements is defined to be the uh, angular how we call it the amount or the angle met by the radius okay the radius connected okay the radius or the radius connecting Okay, the center to the object. Okay, is the angle met by the radius that is connecting the center to the object? Okay, after a certain amount of time. Okay, after a time interval. Okay, after a time interval. It means that. Let's say you have uh, something that is uh, rotating in a circular motion. Okay, something rotating in a circular motion. So let's assume that we start with a normal coordinate system. Okay, a normal coordinate system, something like this. This are x, and this is our y. Okay, and that's an object executing circular motion. Okay, let's say it start from here, all right, and move like that. So let's say the object is here. And it has a mass m, and then after a certain time, okay, it moves to this position. This is still m, so this position x uh, become 
position y. So now the radius is from O to X, or from O to M, and the radius is normally referred to R, R. Because when you move in a circular motion, definitely the distance uh, not changing because you are in a circle. So the total amount of angle you make when we measure this theta in radian, that theta value is called angular displacement. Okay, angular displacement. And mathematically, or when we define in a more detail, uh, about the positive and the negative or angular displacement normally we are using right handed uh, what right handed coordinate system if your things rotate uh, anti clockwise your thumb point out so that means that rotation we will consider as positive so the theta is positive let's say if you make let's say like uh, 40 uh, 45 degree or 90 degree you're going to have pi over 2 radian positive but if you rotate downwards 90 degree to here so you're going to have a negative pi over 2 radian okay so angular displacement measure in radian okay anti-clockwise positive clockwise is negative be consistent but it doesn't mean you're wrong if you say the other way right uh, for example things that rotate clockwise is positive yes because uh, everything in the law of physics we have a mirror image for that so if you see the thing from the other side of the perspective, uh, you still get the correct one. But be consistent with your the way you solve question. Okay. So that is our uh, this angular displacement, and the unit is radian. Yeah, radian. Okay. So that is our question four. This is our page one. Yeah. Okay. Next. Okay, I'll patch two now. Patch two. So we have question five now. So question five is a grindstone in the shape of a uniform cylinder of diameter 0.4 meter. Okay, uh, acquire a rotational rate of one at zero zero revolution per minute from rest. Okay, from rest mean omega initial is zero and then omega final which is a final angular velocity is one at zero zero revolution per minute again you see that is a very uh, popular non-SI unit now uh, compute the constant angular acceleration in six seconds okay in a time of six seconds, okay, compute the uh, constant angular acceleration, find alpha, all right? Well, same thing here. You need to change this one only. Okay, I will change it one directly here. So one at zero, zero times two pi, okay, and then divide by 60 seconds. So we have one at, at uh, point five zero radian per second remember it's in si unit okay next your alpha is equal to omega final minus omega initial divided by time so we have one at, at point five minus zero and then divide by six seconds so simply this one divided by six you get 31.4 radian per second per second okay so that is our value Okay, 31.4 uh, radian per second per second. Okay, next. Number six. Define angular position. Okay. Well, there is a difference between angular position and angular displacement. Okay. What is the angular position actually? Angular position. Okay. Angular position is a way in which okay angular position is a way in which uh, we use angular coordinate system okay to give a point it's okay it's a uh, uh, coordinate value Okay, coordinate values, alright? Like, for example, this one. 
Okay, this one. We normally have uh, X and Y. This is our Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, our Cartesian coordinate system. Let's say an object is here. Okay, this is a uh, object M. It is at this uh, distance. Okay, it is at this distance and then at an angle theta. So the distance is like that. Normally, we have a coordinate system. If we use Cartesian coordinate system, okay, in Cartesian coordinate system, yeah, in Cartesian coordinate system, the position of M, okay, the position of M, okay, uh, we call this one X, yeah, we have a mass M, a position X, X is given, by, or we use something else because we have coordinate X already. Okay, we call it position uh, P. Okay, a position P. Okay, position P. Now, this position P is normally given by X and Y value. Okay, X and Y. Two-dimensional. Okay, two-dimensional. If you are three-dimensional, you have X, Y, Z. Now, in a angular position, you have to give based on other perspective. The distance here, directly from the origin of the rotation, and then also the angle at which it is there. So, uh, what you need is uh, distance r, okay? And of course, distance r, you can get it from x square, uh, square root of the x square plus the y square, using the uh, Pythagoras theorem. Angle, you have no choice but to calculate, or you can actually use the y divide, the up tangent of the y divide by x, okay? So, in, okay, uh, in, uh, we call this one uh, angular coordinate system, okay? Coordinate system, we have our p to be in r theta, okay? In r theta, okay? In r theta, where, your r is equal to the square root of x square plus y square, and then your theta is the up tangent of your y divided by x. Okay, so that is uh, what we have for the angular position. So you see, when you say position, you want to know uh, where is the object. So to know where is the object, uh, we have so many methods. The easiest one is our two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. We just have two number x and y. And then three-dimensional X, Y, Z. And then this one is uh, what we call a cylindrical coordinate system. It is also uh, in the angular coordinate system. We also have a, a, a better one, which is a spherical coordinate system. Normally, that one is in astronomy. Because when you look at the whole damn sky, uh, we assume that everything expands in a circular shape. So uh, we're using the uh, spherical. That's spherical. Spherical is complicated. But... In any coordinate system, they can interchange into each other. We call the transformation. Okay, transformation of from from Cartesian to angular coordinate to spherical or in the opposite direction. No problem. Okay, except the mathematics involved with a little bit tedious. Okay, all right. Seven. Okay, question seven. Okay, our question seven says that a one point four kg table fan of radius twenty cm turns at the rate of omega. 15 radian per second okay now compute number one the tangential speed of a point furthest from the axis of the rotation on a table fan blade number one now you are talking about something that is rotating okay let's say this is a fan rotating okay fan rotating and the radius is given to be r which is 20 cm Okay, 20 cm. Let's say the fan rotate uh, anti-clockwise. The fan blade, right? Fan blade here and here, right? So now, what is the fastest uh, part of the fan? It should be right at the radius point. Okay, right at the radius point. So now, let's say, what is this speed here? Okay, what is the speed of the fan blade? So this one is called tangential speed. Tangential speed is always 90 degrees from the radius. Okay, we call this one tangential speed. Okay. Uh, or just a uh, speed, all right? Now, this speed is related to omega through uh, one of the equation. V is equal to R omega, okay? V is equal to R omega, okay? So, we can calculate from here. 
R is 0 0.20, your omega is 15. So make sure that everything is in SI. Eh? So now this one is your radius in meter already. This one will be uh, radian per second. So you multiply by this. Okay, so you have 3. Okay, 3 meter per second. Okay, this one is 3 meter per second. Okay, right. So 3 meter per second, number 1. Number 2. The centripetal acceleration of a point further from the axis of rotation on the table fan blade. So, what is our centripetal acceleration? The formula is, if you remember, centripetal force is given by mv squared over r. Okay, mv squared over r. Okay, mv squared over r. So, since f equal to ma, so the acceleration here is centripetal acceleration, that is v squared over r. So since your v already calculated, that is 3 squared over r, 0 0.2. So I'm going to have uh, 9, div 9 divided by 0 0.2, so you get 45. Okay, 45 meter per second per second, okay? Alright, next. Next is question 8. Question 8. Define angular velocity. Hmm. Angular velocity omega is defined to be the rate of change of angular displacement. Okay, so we have omega is equal to d theta dt or when you talk about average value normally is the final theta minus initial theta divided by the time. Alright, so that is uh, the formula and the unit for omega is radian per second. Okay, mm, that is question number 8. Number 9. A flywheel of radius 15 cm initially rotating. Initially, that means there is an initial omega. 70 radian per second has a constant angular acceleration of 2. So the alpha is already given 2 radian per second per second. Compute the total angular displacement in 10 seconds. You want to find theta. Okay. So in 10 seconds. The T in 10 seconds, what is the total theta value? Angular displacement. So what we need to do is, we need to use a formula that is actually quite similar to our linear motion. Okay. So if you, you still remember these uh, four equations, okay? uh, we have V is equal to U plus AT, and then V squared equal to U squared plus 2AS, and then we have S is equal to UT plus half AT squared, and the final one is half u plus v times t. All these things, we can actually change it, okay? We can change it into angular motion or rotational motion by replacing u with omega i, v with omega final, a with alpha, t the same. And here, the s will be replaced by theta. So that as long as your alpha is a constant value, so you can actually use the same equation except one for linear motion, another one is for rotational motion. So in this case, you see what you are given. You are given omega i, you are given alpha, you are given t, you want to find theta. So the best equation is number three. So we use this one. We transform the symbol one by one. Theta is equal to omega i t plus half a is replaced by alpha t squared see the format are the same the shape of the equation are the same the only symbols changes only okay so now we can put in the value omega is uh, 70 a time of 10 second plus half 2 and then 10 squared okay this is 700 plus this one is 100 so answer is 800 radian okay 800 radian all right okay there's the first part of the Question. Now we'll go to the second part of the question. Number two. 
the linear distance travel in 10 seconds for a point on the edge of the flywheel. Okay, so you already have theta. Now uh, you need to know how many rotation it is making. Okay, how many rotation? Yeah, how many rotation? So the rotation is what? Number of revolution. Okay, number of revolution is theta divided by 2 pi because one rotation is 2 pi radian so you have now 800 radian divided by 2 pi radian so we can get 800 divided by 2 pi so that is the complete one is 127 rotation but we put 0.2 here okay so we have 127 revolution now one revolution is how big if you look at what given to us is the radius of the flywheel, the radius of the flywheel is 15 centimeter. Okay, 15 centimeter. All right. Now we know flywheel have perimeter, right? So one perimeter is 2 pi r. So the total distance, okay, total linear distance d is equal to the number of revolution multiplied by 2 pi r, isn't it? So our d is, revolution is 127.32, okay, multiplied by 2 pi, and then the radius is 0 0.15 meter, all right? So that one will give us the answer for the total distance in meter, times 2 pi, okay, and then multiply by, 0 0.15 and see what we get 120 okay 120 meter all right so that is more or less like common sense here okay so that is question number nine all right we go to the next question Okay, page 3, number 10, okay, question 10. So question 10 is, a pulley turning at 40 revolution per second slows down uniformly to 30. So we have omega initial is 40 revolution per second, RPS now, yeah? And then the final one is 30 revolution per second in a time of... 2.5 second compute the initial angular velocity and final angular velocity in radian per second okay number one omega initial okay is 40 revolution per second it's already in second so we don't have to change the unit for the time anymore what you need to change is that revolution so we have 40 2 pi radian per second so what you need to is just simply multiply here so what do we have here so if we give our answer, uh, it will be in, uh, that is 80 pi, isn't it? Okay, 2 pi multiplied by 40, so 80 pi. Okay, 80 pi, so I want to know what is the answer. 251.3, uh, 251.3 radian per second. Alright, so there's omega i. Omega f is the same thing, revolution per second, so we have, 30 multiplied by 2 pi radian per second so I have 60 pi now okay 60 pi is equal to 1 at, at 0.5 radian per second okay next there's a first one just now number two the angular acceleration of the motor okay so well it should be the pulley yeah? not motor Maybe it's connected to the motor. This one is pulley. Okay. So, the angular acceleration of the pulley. So, alpha is equal to omega f, omega i divided by t. Well, this one is 1 at, at 0.5 minus 251.3 divided by the time of 2.5 seconds. Okay. So, 
uh, minus 251.3 divided by 2.5 so answer is negative 25.1 radian per second per second so the pulley is slowing down okay the pulley is slowing down all right next question 11 Question 11, a revolving flywheel of radius okay, 10 cm has an initial angular velocity of 50 radian per second. If the angular acceleration is 2 radian per second, calculate number 1. The total angular displacement of the flywheel in 10 seconds. Well, this question is the same as number 9. So, which equation we're using? Uh, you are given t is equal to 10 seconds again. So, we have theta is equal to omega i t plus half alpha t squared. Okay? So, this is 50 times 10 seconds plus half times 2 times 10 seconds squared. So, the answer is this 100, this is 500. Answer is 600 radian. Okay? 600 radian, right? All right, that's number one. Number two, the linear displacement of the flywheel in 10 seconds. Remember what? We just need to find the number of revolution, which is 600 radian divided by 2 pi radian. So what do you get? That is 300 divided by pi. Okay, so we have 95.5 revolution. Okay, and distance travel is number of revolution multiplied by 2 pi r right 95.5 times 2 pi multiplied by a radius of 0 0.10 okay so you have this times uh, 2 oh sorry times times 2 pi right and then multiply 0 0.1 all right so we have 60 meter okay 60 meter okay well that is a uh, same question as number nine question nine okay same as question nine next question 12 okay question 12 a centrifuge a centrifugal machine in a medical laboratory rotates at an angular speed omega of three six zero zero revolution per minute okay when switch off it rotates 50 revolution before coming to rest okay before coming to rest so this one initial the final one is zero and it cover a uh, angular displacement of 50 revolution okay 50 revolution calculate the constant angular acceleration of the centrifuge okay here uh, this one is still not in uh, what we call that uh, in a SI unit so we change the SI unit first yeah so our the first one is to calculate alpha okay so to know alpha uh, we know that we need to use this equation you remember V square equal to U square plus 2 AS uh, that's the one we're using okay plus plus 2 uh, 2 AS at uh, 2 alpha theta right v square is equal to u square plus 2 r 2 a s or 2 alpha theta we need to find alpha so we need to have this one first so the final zero okay final is zero and this one here is equal to 3600 zero. but the 3600 zero is revolution per minute what you need to do is multiply by 2 pi over 60 to change it into radian per second and then don't forget the whole thing square yeah? the whole thing square plus 2 alpha your theta is 50 but revolution is not uh, SI unit you need to change into radian but we know one revolution is 2 pi right hmm. so that is your theta now all right so you can calculate your alpha here by rearrange first before we uh, go ahead with that so we rearrange what we get here is this is 4 so it's 400 uh, 40 pi 40 pi alpha is equal to negative this one if i cancel 3600 i cancel i got 60 so now i got 120 pi square 
everything square yeah so my alpha is all right so i have one two zero pi okay oh sorry one two zero pi square okay so and then divide by 40 pi ah i got negative one one uh wait did i forgot the square this one is one one two zero pi no i think i forgot i forgot on the square right okay let's check again three six zero zero multiply by two pi the question say it is a revolution per minute so 22 pi over 60 so 60 times 60 should be 360 right so this one divides will be 60 so this one will be 120 pi here square okay and this one will be uh oh sorry sorry here mistake is here my mistake this one should be four so this one is four times 520 so 200 pi here okay correct now so 120 pi we square it and then we divide by 200 pi okay so we got uh this one uh, oh sorry why i use minus the okay again one two zero pi square divide by 200 pi okay so i have answer is equal to two two six okay negative two two six point two radian per second per second okay 226.2 uh, right that is number one second one the time elapsed before it stopped okay we have this value this value this value so uh you already have your alpha if you want to use it one of the easiest formula to use is uh omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha t see so we can calculate the time here this one is zero this one again is a uh, three six zero zero multiplied by two pi over 60 but no square eh? and then plus uh, negative two two six point two t so we can calculate our t to be okay so here this one will be one two zero pi okay one two zero pi divide by two two six point two so your answer is one point six seven second okay 1.67 second okay 1.67 seconds okay all right next question 13 so question 13 a wheel rotates okay a wheel rotates from rest oh, rest is w initial zero and then reaching a velocity of 1.57 radian per second in a time of five seconds with constant angular acceleration okay so compute its angular acceleration in radian per second per second uh, this is easy alpha is equal to alpha omega f minus omega i divided by t 1.57 minus 0 divided by 5 okay should be 1.57 divided by 5 you got 0 0.314 radian per second per second okay this one is kacang right okay next one question number 14 a compact disc rotates at omega which is 150 revolution per minute converts angular speed in radian per second well 150 multiplied by 2 pi radian divided by 60 uh sorry 60 minute uh 60 seconds okay 60 second so radian per second all right so you need to just uh compile all the number together 150 times 2 pi okay and then divide by 60 so you got 15.7 radian per second all right easy peasy next one 15. an electric motor rotates at angle uh, constant angular speed well the omega is constant 650 
RPM for a time of 3 seconds. Compute its angular displacement in radian. Okay, so constant value, this one is equal to omega times t because omega is equal to theta over time. Okay, so omega is 650, but it is in RPM. So change by multiplying 2 pi over 60 and then multiply by time of 3 seconds. Okay, so we have here 650 times uh, 2 pi and then times 3 and then divide by 60. So we got 204.2, 204.2 radian. Okay, next, 16. 16 is define frequency and period of rotation. Okay, first frequency. Frequency, normally uh, F, frequency is the number of completed, okay, completed rotation per second or per unit time, right? That is frequency. So F uh, is number of completed rotation per second, that is frequency. And then period of rotation. Period of rotation is the time taken to complete one rotation. Okay. One is number of rotation completed in one second. The period is the time to complete one rotation. Okay. So that is our question number 16. Okay. Next. Page 4. Question 17, page 4. A belt of length 25 meter runs on a wheel of 30 centimeter, radius 30 centimeter. The wheel caused uniformly to rest from an initial speed of uh, 2 revolution per second. Okay. Initial speed, omega initial is 2 revolution per second until it come to a stop omega f is final okay now calculate the number of revolution the wheel turns before it stop well so that one uh number of revolution when it come to a stop what else given okay so we're going to use the total length here. See, total length here. The belt is 25 meter. So what you need to do is just actually divide. Okay. Divide the 25 meter by the perimeter of the, what we call that, uh, the perimeter of the wheel. Okay. So number of revolution, okay, before it really come to a stop is... The 25 centimeter, uh, 25 meter, divide by the perimeter of the wheel, 2 pi r. Okay, so 25 divided by 2 pi. The radius is 30, so we have to change to meter, yeah, 0 0.3. Okay, so we have 25 divided by 2 pi and then 0 0.3. Okay, so we have 13.3. Uh, revolution okay 13.3 revolution okay see next one okay number two this is number one number two angular acceleration of the wheel okay we already have theta here see you have omega i omega f you have theta but your theta is number of revolution multiplied by 2 pi so that you get the answer in radian so we have this multiply by 2 pi so we have 83.3 radian okay 83.3 radian so now i uh, want to find alpha so this is the equation we use final square is equal to omega i square plus 2 alpha theta okay 
So this is zero. This one is uh, two revolution per second. Two revolution per second is uh, two pi radian per second. Say, so change to that one per second. No need to change unit. Okay, but you have to remember to square it later. Plus two alpha multiply at the three point three. Okay, so uh, we simplify the equation first. Yeah, times two. We have. 166.67 alpha is equal to this whole thing here negative so this one will be what this one will be 4 pi everything squared okay so you have uh, 4 pi square and then divide by 166.67 okay so you have alpha is equal to negative uh, 0 0.95 radian per second per second okay done 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 next one 18 okay Atika is playing with her dolls and decides to give them a ride on a record turntable the one that people play music last time that is uh, like 1960-1970 like that she placed one of the dolls on the record player turntable and set the angular speed at omega is equal to 33.3 rpm okay compute the tangential velocity of the doll if it is placed 13 cm from the center of the spinning turntable okay at a distance of 13 centimeter so you want to calculate tangential velocity b is equal to r omega okay so our r 0 0.13 meter okay and then your omega is 33.3 but they were rpm so you have to remember how to change multiply by 2 pi divided by 60 okay so that will be the dose value okay we have 2 pi okay multiply by 33.3 multiply by 0 0.13 okay and then divide by 60 seconds so you have 0 0.45 uh, that one is meter per second okay meter per second that one is linear motion next 19 a race car is moving in a circular track of radius 100 meter at a velocity of 25 meter per second calculate its angular speed in radian per second okay so our v is equal to r omega so what you need to do is just put in the value this is 100 omega so omega is 0 0.25 radian per second okay done last question 20 okay a mass of 2.5 kg move in a circle with a radius of 15.0 centimeter at a constant angular velocity omega of 5.0 radian per second okay number one calculate the tangential speed v equal to r omega so that will be 0 0.15 multiplied by 5 so we have uh, 0 0.75 meter per second okay 0 0.75 meter per second number two calculate the centripetal force okay the centripetal force fc is equal to mv square over r so the mass is already given v is what you calculated r is the same so mass is 2.5 velocity 0 0.75 square and then divide by r which is equal to 0 0.15 okay so see what we get 2.5 times 0 0.75 square divided by 0 0.15 answer is 9.4 newton okay 9.4 newton that's it guys uh, this is a tutorial for number six you wait up for tutorial number seven okay bye